course, we, we, we were involved in, the, in Glastonbury and the Glade, beginning of the Glade area in Glastonbury, so we've been part of this story right from the very beginning, and we've, it's been a, been a wonderful thing. It's what they, use, they said for the first Glade Festival, it's a proper festival. You know, that's what we think, it's a proper festival. For me, it goes back to the sort of early 90s, because um, there was a time when dance music was sort of like, kind of prohibited at Glastonbury, apart from sort of, sort of renegade stage that used to sort of s sneak in. And then finally there was a, there was sort of a, a coalition of people that wanted to make an official dance stage at Glastonbury, this is in 94. And then that they, because I knew Michael Evis from the 70s, my connection with him and Tony Andrews, they got me to sort of finally try and persuade Michael Evis to do a dance stage in the first place. And that led to the dance tent. But even then there was a kind of tension between sort of like, people wanted it to be more commercial dance in the dance tent and more sort of underground techno. Like we, we, we brought people like Plastic Man and Carl Cox, which went over fantastically well, and also some psychedelic acts. And yeah, and there was a faction that didn't really sort of, we're thinking it's, it's too techno, Steve, you know, it's got to be more, um, it's not what the people want down here. I said, you're wrong, <laughs> you're wrong. But our original idea was something in the open air. Actually, we didn't even want a tent. And um, it was a long, hard story getting to the dance tent, but then the dance tent developed into something that still didn't quite fulfill what we were looking for. And then gradually the glade evolved. And that was the area that really kind of, it, it wasn't quite on the big scale that we originally envisaged, but in terms of music programming, it sort of, exactly. it, it, was, it was spot on. When techno live, I was home. Right. It was nice, it was great. Everything got got much smaller and much more compact. And it's fantastic manageable. actually to see that how our thing has been shrinking with the years, you know, to to yeah. iPad now. I'm gonna Even try in to... the last five years. Yes, yeah, just... yes, yeah, it's one. It's like I got any moog on my iPad. It's fabulous. I, I remember when we worked with uh, what is his name? Malcolm Sessi. Malcolm Sessi. He had like a whole room full of moogs and you have to plug every move into each one of it and, and to make a chord to make mean one simple of chord of three notes you know and that, and that was like crazy isn't it and so now it's like great sound though but now everything's much more compact yeah finally towards the end of the 80s when acid house exploded we felt this is you know we found our new musical home and we just saw this and we thought it was like, a, I have seen the future. This is going to be fucking massive, man. electronic dance music. And you'd hear the, 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 the kick drums coming out of the speakers like sort of nicely formed sonic eggs. I think, oh my God, it was like a eureka. I, mean, I was really excited about it. I started saying it in interviews, like this is going to become really like a big thing. And when the journalists were thinking, I was completely like, lost it and taking too many drugs or something but we re that yeah, was a really <laughs> probably had been but that was a really big experience that was particular that was the catalyst it seemed like that the, the, the psychedelic torch was rekindled at the time of acid house or just before it the sort of middle ages people like fraser clark and doing uh, he's had this magazine encyclopedia psychedelica right, okay. which we were we were avid readers of when we started System 7, it was just like there was house, how acid house was about all there was right. in the sort of big the dance music area that was interesting. And then techno developed. The, the people didn't use the word trance. Yeah. That came in the sort of early 90s. Mm. And obviously then there was the Goa influence. Yeah. But we've always been conscious of the fact that we come from a psychedelic rock background and some of the sounds like 
like the EMS uh, yeah. synthesizer and the glissando guitar. We always we always and thought the they would work really yeah. they'd work really well with, with dance music beats. And that yeah. was that was the original idea of System Seven. Yeah. The Glade Festival was perfect for us because as I was talking before about the fact that we have a we make kind of psychedelic techno music or sort of tech trance. That's that's the System yeah. Seven sound and that's very much the sort of the format of the Glade Festival because it marries different there's different stages with different yeah. dance music styles. There's a psychedelic element, there's also a techno element. Mm. And uh, yeah, it's perfect for us. <laughs>